Let's talk about measuring the temperature inside your kiln. You've got a couple of options. You can use a thermocouple. These are great. Um, the probe pokes inside the kiln and you have a digital readout typically these days um, that gives you an indication of whether the kiln is going up or down. There are some issues and that is, and one of the main ones is that they're, um, you know, it's a mechanical device, they do wear out. They're never that accurate unless you spend a fair bit of money on getting a really good one. Another method of uh, measuring uh, firing temperature inside your kiln is to use cones. So, cones are ceramic materials combined to melt at different temperatures. So there are all sorts of different cones for different temperatures. You can get small cones, large cones, cones that have bases attached to them. We generally use large cones. And we're buying them in boxes of 50. We've got a box of cone 9, 10 and 11. Cones also come with uh, little stands that will hold them. And the good thing about that is that the stand sets the cone up uh, so that the cone is facing the right direction for, um, you know, for, for it to bend over. So each cone has a little slope on the bottom of it. If you have a look at this, there's a little slope on the bottom of the cone. It's meant to be on a particular angle to bend properly, to, to bend at the right temperature. And then it needs to go into your cone setter a particular way. It tends to sit into the setter about to where the little, um, little, little circle is with the number on it. When you are firing cones that only just melt and bend over a bit like this, they'll come out of the setter really easily. However, when you are firing something that's going to melt completely, say in this cone 10 firing here, we've got a whole range of cones. We've got a cone here that was for a thousand degrees. We're going to 1285 um, for cone 10 here. And so that means that the cone for a thousand degrees melts completely. So it turns into a complete puddle. If you've got one of these sort of arrangements, then it sticks in there and you can't get it out, or it goes all over your kiln shelf. So we don't tend to, tend to use these setters. We tend to use a fire clay mix called wadding. So uh, it's a mix of about 50 sand and 50 clay. You could mix um, sand with a normal stoneware body if you wanted to, and we place our cones in that. There's a couple of ways that people tend to arrange cones inside um, this fire clay mix. Um, some people set them up so that the cones actually fall onto each other's back. So you can see this cone's over perfectly, the cone's touching its toes. That was a cone 9, and then cone 10's sitting up um, still. When cone 10 bends, it's going to bend and touch the back of the cone 9. So this is actually an accurate cone 9 firing here. But if we were going to cone 10, when that cone 10 bends, it's going to be held up by the cone 9. So you really you prefer the cones to be bending and sitting slightly out to the side. So they're not bending on each other's backs. This is a, a better arrangement. This will work, it's fine, lots of people do it this way. However, if you want to be a bit more accurate, you're better off setting the cones up so they sit out slightly sideways. So there's a cone 5 and a 6. Cone 5 has been slightly overfired. You can see its back's broken. We've got a little negative curving here. Cone 6 hasn't quite got there, but nearly. So how do you set your cones? Cones come in the box. There's two cones joined together typically. Hold your cones at the widest end. Two hands at either end of the cone arrangement and bend downwards and the cones will snap apart. So I've got two cone 9s here. And I'm going to do a cone 10, the next temperature up. This is the temperature I'm actually aiming for. These ones are pink. I imagine it's just food dyed or burns out. It doesn't seem to be there when you've done the firing. Bend those two. Oh, this is a tough set. There we go. <laughs> and blue ones, these are cone 11s. And now let's set them in some wadding. So your wadding should just be, you know, the consistency that you'd make a pot with. And I like to roll my wadding out into a uh, piece that's about the thickness of my finger or my thumb. Now, the angle of the cone is really important. So you want to think about that before you go and place it in the wadding. Sit it on the table, work out what the angle is meant to be, and then you can set your cones up. So there's the angle it's meant to be sitting on. I'm going to place that one in the wadding, bend it to its angle. Poke it in there until it's about where the number starts. Let's check the angle. 
So I've bent mine a bit too far over. There we go. Now I'm going to do a cone 10, the temperature I'm actually aiming for, and then a cone 11. And notice I'm going back and forth, one side to the other. If you're looking into the kiln and the spy hole is here, you see one bend right, one bend left sort of thing. I actually like that process. It helps to figure out what's happening. Just to repeat, make sure that the cone is sitting far enough into the wadding that it's up to the bottom of the circle. This is what happens if you don't do that. We'll just poke this one in a little bit. When you're firing and the cone starts to bend, it will fall out of the wadding all by itself. So make sure you place it in the wadding up to the bottom of the circle. So, if you've got cones in your kiln and you're using a thermocouple as well, you've got a really good idea of what's happening with the firing. Your thermocouple is a guide to whether you're going up or down. The cones are a guide to when you've reached temperature. Here we've got a cone 9 telling us we're getting there. This is our guide cone. Cone 10, that's our target cone. Cone 11, that's our guard cone. This should bend over, so should that. This one should still be standing. And then we know we've hit the right temperature, which is a cone 10 firing in this example.